Okay, I'm going to try and show y'all how I use watercolor crayons, an unmounted stamp, using it just on a clear block so that I can see better where I'm stamping it, and a spritzer bottle with water. Watercolor crayons are so cool because you can blend, that you can color with them and then blend them right on the stamp and they wash off and, and don't mess your stamp up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some color kind of randomly because I, I don't like to just solid color the leaves. I love to do this with leaf images because then I can kind of make them look like fall leaves or spring leaves or whatever. My favorite's fall, of course. So I can just add little snippets of color here and there to make them do whatever I want them to do. Then I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't spray water on top of it. And then with my spray bottle, I'm going to spritz the stamp. Let me move my cardstock out of the way a second. I'm going to spritz it just so that the stamp gets a light misting of water on it. And what that's going to do, it's going to help all of that crayon that I put on there kind of meld together. I'm going to stamp the image, spritz it again, stamp the image, and you want to do this to fill the entire paper up. Now, you're probably not going to have enough color left on the stamp from just one coloring. So, that's when you just come right back. You don't have to clean anything off. You just come right back, and you kind of re-intensify the colors that you put on there before. And you don't have to go back in the exact same spots. You can kind of move some of that color around. Use other colors or colors that kind of will blend with the, the first color you, you put on there. And basically you do the same exact thing. Spritz. Stamp. Spritz. Stamp. Be sure and rotate your image around so that you get movement in all the different directions. Now, if you do get a little buildup of excess moisture, just dab it off with a paper towel. That's all there is to it. Go back, add some more color. I'm trying to do this on a full sheet of cardstock because then I'll show what I'll do with it later. I'm going to add some more purple. I love to put purple in my leaves because fall leaves are my favorite. So I love to have the, the purple look in there. And if you spritz it each time you before you stamp it, you're going to get a little more of your, I like to refer to it as your goodie or your color, off the stamp. go back with the first green that I used. You'll notice I changed it and used a different green the last time. I'm going to use a little different shade of purple. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just whatever looks good to you. When I first began using watercolor crayons on my stamps, I would experiment just on plain pieces of typing paper or copy paper, we call it now, and see what looked good together, what went together, what worked, that sort of thing. So, once you have filled your paper to the desired fullness you want, then I'm going to try to do this real quick so you get the general idea. What you're going to want to do is, and I use styrofoam trays but don't use meat trays because they will contain bacteria. I use ones where just produce have been in or I will actually buy a few um, from the, the little grocery store where I trade with. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a makeup wedge. The pointy part here is your handle. This flat part here is your tool that you're going to use. 
and just get a little bit of the gold metallic. I just used a gold metallic paint. It doesn't matter what brand. That just happens to be what I had here. On the end, and then dab it so that it puts a thin, even coat on the end of your sponge. Then I took a background crackle stamp put the paint on it and then what I do with this is I stamp it and you you do have to add fresh paint every time because you're using such a small amount I stamp it randomly all over my page as the makeup wedge begins to run out of paint I reapply some more dab it to where because you want it to be as smooth and even as possible and if I was doing a smaller card, I would use a larger background crackle stamp and just crackle look the entire piece. On this, because I know I'm going to cut this up into smaller cards, I'm doing the randomness so that I still have some open spots and some spots that are full of design for what I will do with them later and I'll I'll show that after I get to that point. So there's our gold on our surface and I'm hoping that the gold is going to kind of show up in that. Then I take a black acrylic paint, put some out on my little palette and then I'm just going to spritz my toothbrush. Usually I'll dip it in a cup of water, but I don't actually have water in my studio, so I use small amounts of water out here. Dip the end of the toothbrush into the black paint, and I press it with my thumb into the, the brush, and then spatter that black all over that surface that you just stamped and created. And what that black is going to do, it's going to push all of your colors deep into your work because the black is going to come forward. Darker colors are always make whatever's behind it recede. So that's how you're going to help create some dimension or depth into your background piece. So I'll do, after I work with this, um, I'll show y'all what I've done with it.